Uh, well, hello and welcome uh, to our first webinar for our uh, Asian launch in uh, Singapore and Malaysia. My name is Johan Blijdorp. I am one of the founders of Noem, and uh, I will make a short introduction about our company, our philosophy, and our history. And then Minas will take it over and show cases and the clinical use of our products. Why is this not working? One second. All right. Um, we're a company that uh, has uh, been started in the Netherlands. We're active since 2009. And one of our biggest markets is Brazil. Uh, currently, we're active in uh, 50 countries. On the right side, you see a picture. Uh, this is a picture of my father. He's uh, our founding father. He was an uh, oral surgeon in the Netherlands and he uh, invented a formula that released oxygen very slowly. Uh, and he saw a very positive effect on the wound healing that uh, triggered him. And uh, that was the start of the Blue M Company. Uh, the oxygen technique is uh, complex, but uh, also very simple. Our, uh, we have a magical gel, and, a magical, uh, and the magical gel is the basics for all our products. The gel releases oxygen in a very low quantity and in a constant flow. This helps to kill the anaerobic bacteria, the bad bacteria, but it does not kill all the bacteria, so there are no negative side effects like with fluoride Oxygen also penetrates and destroys the biofilm. This way it cleans very well and also controls the aerobics. So it stabilizes the bacteria levels. But on the other side, it also stimulates wound healing. Oxygen in a very low quantity stimulates wound healing. Our company is based in the Netherlands and uh, we started, in, like I said before, in 2009. Since then, uh, we have been growing and we're now active in more than 60 countries. You can find a lot of publications we've done with our products, more and more. I think we have already have now more than over 50 publications published and there are about 100 in process. This is about our timeline, when we did our first show, when we started, what we've done over the years. Here are some nice pictures of events where we've been from CIOS, IDS, uh, all the nice booths. Last week, we had a big expo together with uh, Minas in uh, Copenhagen, Europeo. Another page of beautiful pictures from the ADEC in Dubai, uh, the launch in Saudi Arabia, with, uh, Minas again, and uh, all the other QLs and nice uh, events. This is our team, current team. On the left side, you see my father, our founding father, who unfortunately passed away last year. Next to him, my uh, business partner, Fokia Middendorp, and on the other side of me, you see Natalie Beck. Together, we founded the company back in 2009. On the right side, you see our CFO, Joanna, and the rest of our team is taking care of the marketing and the sales support. So together, we make the products and we make sure they get to Malaysia and Singapore. This is our new uh, new uh, marketing. We have a nice new video as well. I will try to show that to you uh, at the end of my presentation. Uh, Blue One makes three kinds of products. First of all, we make products for you as clinician in the clinics, problem care products. We make products for daily care that patients can use before surgery, after surgery, but also for maintenance to keep their mouth clean and to control the level of bacteria. We also make products for on the go, like uh, a foam to clean aligners and dentures, a mouth spray for uh, control the bacteria after food. We have a complete wide range of products. Here you can see our products. Here we have a uh, mouthwash, toothpaste, an oral gel that Minas will explain a lot about. That you can use during surgery, periodontal, periodontal treatments. We have scrapers to clean the tongue. We have certain, and we have special toothbrushes before surgery. We have day-to-day uh, -to -day toothbrushes. We also make sonic care brushes. So we have a complete line of products for you as clinicians to use during surgery and for maintenance for daily use and before and after surgery. This is our movie and I don't think it plays from here, but I can try. No, I will put on switch screens. Uh, 
Okay. One second, Aminas, I will show the movie and then you can take over. Okay for you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> This is our story. Right. Uh, Ah, here. Okay. Share screen. Share. This is our new brand move. You can see it, Minos? Yes. This is our story. This is our soul. Our average lifespan is 80 years. There was life before us, and there will be life after us. Our lives represent only a fraction of the total time. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. We live as though everything is a miracle. Nature, breath, oxygen, heartbeat, love, sunrise, birth. To us, life is a miracle. Oral health, the window to our overall health. Our mouth is the entry point to our digestive, respiratory, and nervous system, and therefore crucial for the quality and quantity of our lives. We are Blue M, a leading oral health brand. We elevate health and well-being through oral care. We create revolutionary oral care essentials for day-to-day -day life. We have a 10-year plus proven track record supplying dental professionals, setting a whole new standard in the industry. Today, our award-winning products are available in over 50 countries worldwide, benefiting us and the world we live in. Elevate life at bluemcare.com. All right. So for now, Minas, I think you can take over. Okay. So let me just share my screen. Okay. Can can you hear me? Yes, of course. I will do now. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, where are we? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yes. So now you're a host. All good. Okay, and I think that you can see my screen now, my PowerPoint. Uh, I think uh, I can see your screen, yeah. 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 It's a thank screen you. sharing, uh, it's live. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Johan. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all the colleagues that are uh, today with us. It's two o'clock now here in London. And uh, before starting, I would like to thank a lot uh, all the people at uh, TKDS in uh, Malaysia, Holiday, Keith, and all the other lovely people there. And of course, the beautiful team in uh, in Blue M, because they are the host, and without them, we couldn't have these beautiful products. So, uh, as Johan explained, there is a wide range of uh, products that they release oxygen. There are many products that can be used for daily care, and I will show to you how I'm using those products for the clinical work for my surgeries and my implants. And how those products, how oxygen can help us to enhance their healing and at the same time control the bacteria in the best way. That's me. I have a master and a PhD in oral surgery from my university back home in Athens in Greece. I'm also a diplomat of ICOI, the International Congress of Oral Implantologists. And the last uh, seven years around, I'm in the UK 
in London and uh, where I work in private practice. And at the same time, we have the chance to do lots of uh, research and uh, lots of lecturing around the world. So the last 15 years, uh, we have done lots of work. We have published in uh, PubMed more than around 30 papers. All of them are focused on oral surgery, implants, uh, bone grafting. And that's the main reason why the last five years I work with uh, Blue M and I work exclusively using oxygen. I have managed the last years to stop uh, absolutely, I've stopped completely uh, needing to have uh, chlorhexidine for my work. Oxygen is very important. We know this from medicine. The role of oxygen is crucial in wood healing as oxygen is involved in many multiple hard and soft tissue healing processes. We need oxygen when we have any kind of wound in the body, in the mouth. This wound requires a variety of cells and these cells have an increased metabolic activity. That means that they have a high demand for oxygen and those cells in order to give us the best healing they need oxygen for make new blood vessels for neovascularization to create new collagen, new epithelium, to kill bacteria, to control bacteria, and to remove any kind of dead cells and necrotic tissue. So these are the ways that oxygen works, and this is essential for all the healing procedures. And when we don't have enough oxygen, when we have hypoxia, then we have problems. We have pain, we have slow healing, and we have poor healing and complications. So it's a very important uh, piece of the puzzle, oxygen. I will show to you how we can use it in oral surgery and mainly in uh, implant uh, treatment procedures. And of course, uh, we know very well that the same rules that apply for wound healing uh, er everywhere in the, in the body, the same also applies for the mouth, the oral mucosa, and the oral soft tissues. We have, uh, especially regarding Bluem, uh, many papers so far, and uh, we are still working. We have an excellent uh, scientific board uh, with Tatiana, Irfan, Azai, Alberto, all over the world. Plus, we have many other uh, high-level uh, top clinicians working with us uh, uh, the whole time to do more clinical and uh, in vitro research. These are uh, the ingredients, how those products uh, are working, how they release oxygen. Uh, shortly, they release active oxygen, as Johan mentioned. And the important is that the release of oxygen is low quantity in a controlled manner and in a stable pace for around five to 20 minutes. So we don't have a very uh, sudden release of a very large amount of oxygen uh, that could harm the tissues. The important is that it's a low quantity, slow release, stable pace in a controlled manner for up to 20 minutes. And this is enough to trigger to activate the healing and to control the bacteria. It's not just the active oxygen. We have uh, uh, xylitol, uh, honey, uh, methyl salicylate factors that uh, control the inflammation also, have antiseptic uh, effects. And uh, moreover, we have lactoferrin, which is important because uh, we can see that uh, lactoferrin is stimulating primary osteoblasts. Uh, it is antibacterial and lactoferrin helps a lot the healing of the heart and mainly the soft tissues. So what we can do, uh, ideally we need to prevent uh, perimplantitis instead of trying to treat perimplantitis. Unfortunately, uh, nowadays we have many cases that we have to try our best to keep the implants in the mouth instead of just removing it and starting over. Always like in this case where we have a localized perimplantitis on this implant, we try with a conservative approach. So I try not to do any surgery. These are the protocols we try in a conservative way. We try to clean and then to control the bacteria without doing any surgery. To do this in the clinic, what we can do, we can 
irrigate all the soft tissues, the deep uh, pouches, the very implant defect with a Blue M uh, solution. And as you can see, this is immediately releasing oxygen. The oxygen will kill bacteria, will kill the bad bacteria inside the defect around the implant. And at the same time, it will release the other factors that will stimulate the healing. Moreover, we can use the gel. We can topically apply the gel over the soft tissues. And then what I'm doing is with the uh, interdental brush, I, I use the brush in order to uh, apply the gel and move the gel as much as I can, of course, inside the soft tissues to get more of the effect. So the gel gets in there for the next five to 20 minutes. I know that it will be released in a nice way as low quantity of oxygen. And also it will release the other important factors like lactoferrin that will reduce the inflammation and they will stimulate the healing in a very nice way. So that's what we can do as a conservative uh, approach. Then the patient needs to do the same at home. And when we try to control the inflammation in a nice way, then in such cases, if it's indicated, then we do a localized surgery. It's very important to, move, to open a small flap. And as we can see here, we need to try to clean manually or using a small uh, specific uh, degranulation burrs to remove any soft tissues from the infected area. And then as we know, it's mandatory, it's essential to disinfect and clean and polish the surface of the implant. There are specific uh, tools to do this mechanically. And after that, we need to decontaminate the surface of the implant. There are many ways to do it. Uh, if we look at the literature, we can see that the that what's mostly used is chlorhexidine and uh, citric acid. We know very well that these uh, elements, they have a very high potential to remove and kill the biofilm. But on the other hand, uh, they're associated with, uh, with problems. The major problem is the cytotoxicity. We know very well that chlorhexidine and citric acid, they might be toxic for the soft tissues. It has been shown uh, through research that chlorhexidine might restrain cell proliferation and it might slow down or inhibit the synthesis of uh, new collagen. Citric acid, may lead to corrosion of the implant surface. This is important because it might release molecules that might have a very bad effect on the surrounding soft tissues. And also we can see that citric acid also might suppress the attachment and the spreading of fibroblasts. So we can use those uh, factors. We can use chlorhexidine and citric acid to decontaminate the surface of the implant. But we have to be aware that there are many complications. There are many problems associated with the use of chlorhexidine and citric acid. That's why we have to be very careful and especially for citric acid, um, we have to be especially careful. It's very difficult to apply it clinically because it must not touch the surroundings of and heart tissues. So I help my, my work by using the blue M gel. Sometimes I try to do it without the need to use uh, chlorhexidine or citric acid because it will clean the surface, it will control the bacteria, it will kill the bad bacteria. So it will do what chlorhexidine is doing. And at the same time, it has more um, ingredients that not only they will not harm the soft tissues or the hard tissues, but on the contrary, they will promote, they will enhance in a dynamic way, the healing of the area. So this is very important because we have a product that it's releasing oxygen and has lactoferrin and other elements. So it's not just antibacterial, and we know that it is a very good antibacterial uh, product and agent, but it has more values. It, it has anti-inflammatory effects. It takes away necrotic cells, necrotic tissue. It's cleaning the area. It's killing the bad bacteria. It helps the area to get new blood vessels, new collagen synthesis, a new epithelium, 
so we have a much much better softer heart tissue healing when we do all this we can do our uh, gbr any protocol that works in our hands and then use high quality stitches to uh, replace the the flap and finish our surgery over the stitches i do the same i use the blue m gel uh, immediately after the surgery and then i give the gel to my patient to use it many times a day so that it will control the bacteria uh, over the surgical wound and also the gel will penetrate the, the incision lines and actively it will help the healing of the soft tissues. So if we do everything right, we can have a very good result. Of course, we know that may, may, maybe in half of the cases we will not get very good results when we have already an established perimplantitis. So the best way is to do our best to learn the best uh, protocols, the best practice in order to place correctly our implants and to use the correct tools to prevent perimplantitis. We have a wide range of tools that fill in the puzzle. They give us excellent choices to make our surgeries much better. Uh, we have a gel, we have uh, the foam, we have the mouthwash. Mostly I'm using the foam, the gel, and the mouthwash to my patients. Whenever I'm finishing a surgery, I give those products complimentary to my patients. And I will show to you how I use them during the surgery. Or of course, immediately after. One excellent uh, application that I do it every time I place uh, stitches and always I improve my my results, as I told you before, is to use the gel over the stitches. And why we need to do this? We need to do this because we know from uh, the literature that bacteria, immediately when we finish the surgery and we place the stitches, the bacteria, they like to colonize the suture material. So in the mouth, we have a proliferation and accumulation of bacteria on the suture material. Of course, if we use monofilament and the higher the quality of the sutures, the less bacteria we will get on the stitches. But always it's a problem. We have oral bacteria, we have biofilm immediately accumulating on the surface of the stitches. And in oral surgery and implantology, this is a very important reason why we might get local inflammation. We might get local infection and this might give us problem, it might give us a dehiscence of the wound, a poor healing and a delayed healing. It's important in surgery, it's a basic surgical uh, concept that we have to be aware of. We can use chlorexidine gels, but chlorexidine will just be very aggressive towards all the bacteria. Instead of using the blue M gel, I'm using the oxygen to control the bad bacteria over the stitches and also the oxygen will penetrate inside the wound we know that it it will go inside the wound uh, around three to four millimeters which is very important so it will have an effect to the biofilm and also it will penetrate the margins of the wound and lactoferrin and the other elements will actively from day one start improving the healing so not only on one part, I keep the bacteria under control, which is very important not to have postoperative infections, but also the same gel promotes the soft tissue healing. So I have faster healing, less uh, discomfort and much less uh, scar formation. This is absolutely very important we get much better results uh, after all, all our surgeries uh, with implants with uh, periodontics with oral surgery and we avoid all the side effects of chlorexidine we have many side effects if we look at the literature we can see all the problems associated with the use of chlorexidine we can have from parotid gland swelling 
to the most common uh, problems like the pigmentation of the soft tissues and uh, most importantly, the teeth. We can have an alteration of the taste, a burning sensation. If we use too much chlorhexidine for a long time, we're gonna have ulceration or, or erosions or some kind of an, uh, anesthetic sensation or even paresthesia. And something else very important is the problems with uh, uh, hypersensitivity reactions and uh, allergic reactions. Uh, we cannot use chlorhexidine to rinse directly an open uh, wound because if the patient will be allergic to chlorhexidine, this might trigger a very uh, severe reaction. And there are even cases that uh, uh, we have deaths because of hypersensitivity to chlorhexidine that was used uh, directly inside the surgical wound. So we have to be very careful and um, not only that, we know that the chlorhexidine will not help the soft tissue healing. On the contrary, if we use it for a long time to try to control the bacteria, it will slow down the healing of the soft tissues. So all those problems can be solved by trying to find out a better solution. This is the ideal solution that I use the last years every day. Uh, whenever I have an infected area, whenever I have to remove uh, a tooth like this one, where you can see we have a fracture and everything is locally swollen, infected. We have pus, we have a drainage of pus here, we have a fistula. So of course we have to remove the tooth, manually debride the area from all the soft tissues, clean the bone, polish the bone, and then the next pieces of the puzzle of my protocols, I use the gel inside the, the bone defect because it's absolutely safe. Not only it doesn't harm the tissues, not only doesn't have the risk of any allergic reactions, on the other side, it will control the bacteria and it will immediately starting enhancing the, the hard and soft tissue healing. So what I'm doing, I, I place the gels, now Blue M will release some specific uh, syringes for clinical use to make easier the application of the gel. I leave it inside the bone defect up to five minutes. So we can see that immediately it starts working, starts releasing oxygen. And then I rinse it with uh, sterile saline or what I do because it's safe and effective. Instead of using anything else, I can rinse my uh, my wounds directly with Blue M solution. So you can see how nicely this removes all the debris and you can see immediately the bubbles. So immediately when this uh, solution gets in contact with uh, blood or saliva or the tissues, it's a releasing oxygen. And as we said, it's a slow release in a stable pace up to five to 20 minutes and that's all, this is enough to control the bacteria and activate dynamically the healing of the heart and the soft tissues. Then we can use it in many other ways. As I told you, when I finish the surgery, always I apply the, I apply the gel over the wound on the stitches and I try to cover all the, the wound area. And then in cases, in most of the cases where I give to my patient a provisional acrylic denture, because you see, I can I try to avoid any pressure. I use small partial uh, temporary dentures like this one with a large palatal uh, flange. So all the pressure goes to the palatal aspect. And I give the gel to my patient and I instruct them to use the gel in this way. So I tell them before fitting the denture, take the gel and apply an amount of the gel inside the denture where this will fit in the mouth. So what will happen? They will fit the denture and the gel will be trapped in between the acrylic and the wound area. This is something very easy that all the patients uh, can do. It feels better for them because they have less inflammation locally. But the big effects is that this 
will improve the healing during the uh, first couple of weeks, which are the most important weeks for the healing of the soft tissues. It's very easy for the patients to do it. And most importantly, they can do it as many times they want every day for as many days as they want, because it has absolutely no side effects, no problems associated with the use of Blue M. Now, we can see after a week that the healing is good, but in many cases, because of tension uh, or because of the design of the flap or because of other reasons, uh, we might have a small dehiscence or we might have some traction here, some uh, tension, so the wound is trying to heal under secondary intention. This is where we need oxygen. This is where we need lactoferrin because this agent will help this fresh wound and this uh, connective tissue that tries to proliferate from the margins of the wound. The blue M will help the proliferation of the connective tissue and also it will improve the, uh, the new formation of epithelial cells. So that's how secondary intention healing works. First of all, we have the connective tissue layer and over this layer of the newly formed connective tissue from the margins of the wound, we'll have new layers of epithelial cells that they will try quickly to, to cover the wound. For all those aspects of secondary intention healing, the oxygen and lactoferrin will help a lot to uh, enhance it and accelerate it. So we will be able to promote the healing, avoid uh, complications, avoid slow healing, avoid poor healing, and uh, very importantly, avoid uh, infections. So we can get, in most of our cases, an excellent result. Uh, it's very important then when we place the implant, I will share with you uh, some very nice uh, modern uh, ideas and uh, protocols, and you will see how uh, I use Blue M inside my protocol as a part of my protocol to get the best results in a reliable way and in a simple and predictable way. When uh, we place implants, when we do any kind of surgical or prosthetic treatment with implants, we have to know that what we are doing, the implant therapy, the dental implant is a complex system that comprises of the human hard and soft tissues, the mechanical components of the implant and the restoration. And all this is surrounded and in contact with the oral bacteria and the biofilm. This is very important. It's important because nothing is separate, all are linked together. So if we have a problem to one of those elements, the whole system of the implant will be in trouble. So which are those elements? We all know the, the factors, 3D implant positioning, implant abutment interface, the quality of a quantity of hard and soft tissues. We have the very important factor of the anatomy of the emergence and the cervical profiles. It's important also what kind of materials we're using for the implants, the abutments and the restorations. And again, very important, all this is inside the oral biofilm, the bacteria and from day one, before we do our surgery and for the long-term maintenance, we need to keep the bacteria under control. Unfortunately, we have cases like this one. We see those cases every day. And uh, just by looking at this uh, placed implant, we can understand how many things are wrong from the 3D implant positioning. That's the first factor that is very wrong here. And you see the bad implant positioning, how it's connected to the other factors and it gives us more and more problems. So because of the bad positioning, 
we have no bone uh, buccally to this implant. As a result, you can see how thin uh, and fragile and non-keratinized tissues we have uh, buccally on the buccal area. There is no emergence profile. The cervical profile will be very bad. Uh, and already it's an area, even with a healing abutment that accumulates bacteria. So we have to be careful with all the factors. It's not very difficult, but if we have our checklist and if we keep in mind all these important elements for successful implant therapy, then we will take our treatments to the next level. And all of us in a very predictable and uh, constant way to, to have very good results like this one. So Blue M oxygen help us a lot with the soft tissues and the control of the bacteria and the biofilm. Also, we have excellent tools nowadays to shape, condition, and reconstruct the cervical and the emergence profile of our implants, because it's not just to keep the bacteria under control. This at the same time um, has to be um, with a good emergence profile and a good cervical profile of the restoration because everything works, works together. Because this profile of the soft tissues is related also with perimplantitis and the problems around our implants. So when we do implants, if we are doing the surgery, the restorative or both uh, phases, it's essential for us to regenerate to condition a natural emergence profile and cervical profile, not only because we have much better aesthetics, but because we have a much better prosthesis from any biological and functional point of view. So to understand this is the cervical profile of the soft tissues and it's matching the contour of our restoration. So we want our restorations to have a beautiful, natural as possible contour like this restoration. So this is the contour of the restoration. So this red line is where we will have the contour of the restoration, the cervical profile. And this is where the bacteria will be accumulated. So we can see, we can understand that the plaque control zone where the bacteria will be accumulated in this case is in this area. So it's very far away from the platform of the implant. And this area is very easily accessible to the patient to use the Blue M toothpaste and uh, the uh, floss or the interdental brush to keep it clean. And if the patient can keep clean every day, the implant prosthesis, then most probably will never have problems with uh, perimplant uh, mucositis and perimplantitis. So a good design and a good design is the result of the correct placement and the correct conditioning of the soft tissues will give us an excellent restoration. And this restoration will be very easy for the patient to keep it clean with the Blue M toothpaste and what I all recommend to my patients always is to use the gel on the interdental brushes and then apply the brushes. So this diagram, this sketch is showing to us very nicely the importance of the emergence and the survival, cervical profile anatomy. This is a nice restoration because the correct profile give us a good contour, a very nice contour and we have in this area, the plaque control zone, a bad emergence profile, a thin circular small emergence profile like this one will result in a mushroom shape restoration, which unfortunately is very common. And a restoration like this one has large, big undercuts. And most importantly, the problem is that the plaque control zone is located deep, close to the platform, and it's much more difficult for the patient with standard oral hygiene measures every day to access it and remove the bacteria down there. 
So we have uh, nice tools and we have the knowledge for almost all of our everyday cases to create a good cervical profile and also a very good emergence profile. This is uh, the emergence profile of the soft tissues. And when we create a good emergence profile of the soft tissues, the restoration also will follow this profile and will have an excellent peri-implant soft tissue emergence profile. And this is important because this profile is the peri-implant seal. A thick, nicely conditioned anatomically soft tissue profile will provide the best uh, protection because it's the best uh, sealing seal for our implant platform. You see how nicely the good anatomy is protecting all this very sensitive and crucial supracrestal complex of our implant. And these are the zones that we can create for every uh, implant uh, treatment. We need to have a connective tissue zone here deep, close to the implant platform. It's around one and a half millimeter, the connective tissue zone. And then we have the junctional epithelium zone. This has to be at least one and a half millimeters. It can be much larger, especially in anteriors. But for premolars and molars, where this is very important, we need at least one and a half millimeter. So we need three to four millimeters thickness uh, height of connective tissues so that the plaque control zone will be located far away from the implant platform in this area, which doesn't only look nice, but also it's accessible for the patient to clean it. So in this way, we have good design and the good design means uh, adequate cleaning and removal of the bacteria and less perimplantitis. To do this, when we place implants, we have to take account that every tooth that we remove and every tooth that we will need to replace have a unique specific anatomy at this cervical level. Different teeth have different anatomies. You can see this uh, CBCT axial slice here. So you can see how nicely each root has a different anatomy. That's the canine, the anteriors. Look the anatomy of the premolar at the cervical level and of the upper molar. But when we place the implant, the implant is circular up to five millimeters. So it's extremely difficult, this circular uh, fixture to mimic the anatomy of those teeth. What we can do to reconstruct the anatomy and to mimic nature is to use customized anatomical healing abutments that will reconstruct this lost anatomy at the cervical level of the soft tissues and give us the correct anatomy. So anatomical customized healing abutments, this is what I'm using for my implant treatments in uh, synergy with oxygen. So I will show to you how you can use the cervical system. That's what I'm using every day to have simplified procedures, improve the aesthetics, and much, much better and favorable biological response to the implant supportive restorations. We have lots of literature uh, emphasizing the benefits of the customized anatomical abutments, but it's not enough. Always we have to help the body and we have to control the bacteria and improve the soft tissue healing. I'll show you a case uh, that uh, highlights in a very nice way my protocol. And uh, such protocols are very simple, very specific, and any clinician, uh, no matter what's the experience, uh, if we are careful, we can implement such protocols in, from tomorrow in our everyday cases. So in this case, uh, because of grinding, the patient you can see developed a vertical crown and root fracture to the first premolar. So this is the tooth that had the fracture. The tooth was mobile and you can see 
that we had already a local inflammation. So the first step is to remove the broken tooth in a minimally invasive way. So we have to be careful with the extraction because we don't need to damage and lose any soft and hard tissues, especially at the buccal aspect of the broken tooth. So we start with the extraction. It's the first skill that we have to develop. We have to learn to remove our teeth in a very nice, a traumatic way. This is the tooth. You can see the fracture, how this broke because of uh, the occlusal forces uh, during the grinding. And the first rule, as I told you uh, before, is to place the implant at the correct position. There are many ways to do that. We can have a, a prosthetic uh, stent. We can have a surgical guide. Uh, we can have also other tools like the tools from the cervical guide system uh, that when we work freehand, we have some circular tabs like this one. This is a seven millimeter tab from the system that we place it exactly where is the edentulous area. So we can know the space, it's seven millimeters. And this circular tab being in light contact to the adjacent teeth in the middle has a two millimeter uh, hole. So this hole is exactly in the middle of the prosthetic space. So what we do clinically when we place freehand uh, the implants, we use the tab, the circular tab in place and through the central hole, we can do our initial pilot osteotomy. So the pilot osteotomy will be exactly in the middle and then we, it can help us like in this case, to place the implant at the correct position. So this is a very common scenario of extraction and immediate placement. Then we do our grafting, any type of grafting material that works in our hands. What we are doing is the dual zone grafting, meaning that we are using a bone graft material that will fill not only the bone defect deep around the implant, but also it will fill the soft tissue space. That's the dual zone concept. What I prefer to do is uh, to use a fully resorbable uh, synthetic material, but we know from uh, clinical experience and from the research and the literature that any kind of allogenic material or uh, xenograft can give us very good results. The problem now, when we have done the extraction of the implant placement and the grafting is first of all, how we will cover and protect the implant and the bone graft. And most importantly, how we will reconstruct the soft tissues and we will keep this anatomy of the emergence and cervical profile. If we place a stock healing abutment, it will not serve us. It's a cylindrical abutment. Even if we use a wider one, it will be something cylindrical. But here we don't have a cylindrical anatomy. We have a totally different anatomy of profile. That's why we need customized, customizable anatomical abutments like this one that I did it chair side in 10 minutes using the mold of the cervical system. If you don't know the cervical system, and of course, if you will need to learn more about the Blue M products, all the beautiful people at TKDS in Malaysia will give you all the information. And uh, what's the concept? The concept is that chair side using composite, using the cervical system, we can prepare in a few minutes a customized abutment that like in this case and like in any other case will mimic in a very nice way the anatomy of the tooth that we have just removed or of, of the tooth that it's missing a long time. So you see, that's the crown of the tooth. That's the anatomy of the tooth at the cervical level where we are interested in the cervical level. And the system has many different profiles. So we choose the profile here. We chose 
I have chosen a premolar large in dimensions profile because it fits nicely, it fits best the profile of the extracted tooth. So we have uh, the tools, chair side intraorally in a, just a few minutes to find out what's the profile and what's the anatomical abutment we have to create. So what we are doing is with a stock a provisional abutment and with composite using the cervical system in a few minutes we have read the abutment and we fit the abutment onto the implant. This is the most important uh, benefit of the customized anatomical abutments. They have the specific anatomy to condition uh, and regenerate the perfect emergence profile. And you see, that's why we have to be careful also how deep we'll place our implant. We need the implant to be at least four millimeters from the zenith of the soft tissues. The platform of the implant has to be at least four millimeters from the soft tissue where at the end will be the contour of the restoration, meaning where we want to have, where we want to locate the plaque control zone so we'll be able to clean it. Before I fit any abutment, no matter if it's a customized uh, anatomical abutment or a simple stock healing abutment, always I use blue M gel on the abutment and then I fit it onto the implant. And this is essential for two reasons. One reason is the obvious reason to control the bacteria because this junction, the platform is full of bacteria and we don't need those bacteria there. And the other reason is that every time we fit the abutment, every time we will detach the abutment and fit it back, this is a tiny bit, but it's important. It's damaging the epithelium because immediately when we fit the titanium abutment or the customized abutment from composite, the epithelium starts attaching to the titanium and to the composite. So when we will remove the abutment, uh, somehow we'll damage a bit the composite, the, sorry, the epithelium. That's why sometimes it's bleeding. And this is why we'll place the gel again and we'll fit the abutment. So the gel immediately will enhance, stimulate the healing of the soft tissues. So the soft tissues around the abutment will have no inflammation, no swelling, uh, no bacteria, and they will mature and heal really nicely. So this is very important. Whenever you fit a custom abutment, whenever you fit a customized abutment, please always use a small amount of Blue M gel in this very sensitive area of the platform to control the bacteria and to help the soft tissues to heal in a much, much nice way. So this is what happens. I remove the tooth. I place the implant. I did my dual zone grafting here in my hands with the resorbable synthetic. I used power bone. And then I placed my customized abutment. So first of all, the abutment makes an ideal prosthetic seal for the underlying bone graft. And at the same time, the anatomy of the abutment will condition the ideal profile of the soft tissues. So that's how I finished my surgery. I placed my gel on the abutment. I fitted the abutment. I torque it so it's stable. And then I sealed the access hole. And I just placed a, a, a horizontal a mattress just to keep stable the soft tissues. Now, now it's the most important uh, phase because during the next couple of weeks, we want everything to heal without problems. It's the most crucial uh, timing. We need the ideal soft tissue healing. We need all those areas here to have very fast and complicated, improved secondary intention healing. And we need also the stitches to be 
without bacteria, without inflammation. That's why, as I told you, I use the gel after the surgery and I give it to the patient. And because it has no side effects at all, on the contrary, it only improves the healing. I tell the patient to use it as many times a day they can. So every time the patient will apply the gel, for 20 minutes, we'll have a slow release of oxygen and we'll have much improved neovascularization and synthesis of collagen and new epithelium. So you can see after 10 days, how clean the suture is. There's no inflammation at all. And we have a very rapid and very nice healing of the soft tissues. So the soft tissue already starts proliferating to adapt and connect to the anatomical surface of our cervical abutment. This is after 10 days. And the big benefit is that we have to do nothing more. We finish surgically everything in one go. So in one appointment, we do the extraction, implant placement, bone grafting, anatomical customized abutment, and then the Blue M does all the work for us. The oxygen every day at home for the next two to three months is enough to lead us to this result. So the body and the oxygen does all the work. And after three months, you can see what a nice result we get. We have a perfect anatomy. We have no loss at all of volume and see how strong and healthy keratinized soft tissues we have around the anatomical abutment. So after three months, for the first time, I removed the abutment and we are very happy to see that following such a reliable and effective and simple protocol, in one surgery, we have the implant ready and we have also ready the soft tissues. We have ready the perfect cervical anatomy and we have ready an excellent emergence profile. And you can see how nicely this is almost the same with the natural anatomy of the tooth. Of course, here we still see this uh, popcorn effect, but this is exactly what we want to do because it's a, I remember, I remind you it's a dual zone grafting. So we grafted also the soft tissue zone with our bone graft. Because I use a absorbable bone graft, I know that in the next uh, year, this will completely break down and it will be replaced by connective tissue and soft tissue. But it's not a problem at all to have this popcorn effect. On the contrary, we have a perfect result following such a simplified protocol. And this is all the pictures together. You see with the oxygen, we have a perfect soft tissue healing. And with the anatomical abutment, we have managed to, almost without doing nothing, just fitting the abutment, we have an ideal, like the nature, perfect soft tissue profile. We take an impression and now the laboratory will follow what we created with the anatomical abutment. And so it's not any kind of guesswork from the, the lab. Uh, the technician will tell you that this is the best restoration. It's extremely easy for the technician when he has a soft tissue profile like that to give us a perfect restoration that fulfills all the aesthetic, biological, and functional requirements. So we have a perfect restoration. We fit our restoration. This is immediately after fitting. Now I wait the patient to finally decide to start the whitening. That's in a glance, the whole protocol from the extraction, the placement, the anatomical abutment, the healing, the cut cam design of the prosthesis and the fitting of the final crown. And uh, you can see that when we do everything in a precise way, when we follow our protocols, then everything heals nicely. And instructing the patient 
to keep it clean with uh, the blue M mouthwash, uh, some blue M gel on the floss or on the interdental uh, brush. Everything is perfectly clean. This is how the patient came back after six months. You can see the result. Everything is clean, no inflammation, no infection, perfect aesthetic result, excellent contour. And I have to remind to you, we have to focus on the uh, factor that the plaque accumulation zone is exactly where is the profile, the zenith of the soft tissues. is around here because we did an excellent soft tissue profile and as a result, an excellent crown. So this is where we have the accumulation of the plaque. So it's very easy for the patient to keep it clean. And as a result, most probably we'll never have problems with inflammation and perimplantitis around such an implant. All this is published, so you can find the publication to read more about how you can implement those uh, easy and nice protocols with customized cervical abutments for your everyday cases. And then we have many important choices because like this patient, she's a grinder. So I had to make for him an acrylic night guard and we need the night guards to be clean without uh, bacteria. And uh, what can we do? to brush them, but here is where I use, and I give it to all my patients, the blue M foam. It's the best tool we have to clean the surfaces of the, of the night guards, like in this case. Whenever uh, my patients or myself were using the blue M foam for this reason, so just to brush it with water and your uh, toothbrush, and then I instruct the patient to fill the whole surface of the night guard, or not just the night guard, even if they have uh, Invisalign or retainers, they do the same before storing aside the night guard or the retainer. They fill it with the foam and they just leave it like that. So the foam disinfects the retainer or the night guard, removes all the plaque, all the bacteria. And that's how we can keep the retainer and the night guard clean for many, many months. I give them the mouthwash also, the foam, the gel. I tell them, please always, before you use around your teeth floss or interdental brushes, take a small amount of the gel and use it. And of course, again, the huge benefit is that this is something that they can use it every day, as many times they want, forever. It will control the bacteria and not only there are no side effects, no staining uh, of the teeth, uh, no cytotoxicity. On the contrary, the blue M will keep everything without inflammation. And if there is any need around the teeth for healing, the blue M will also help the healing of the soft tissues. So we have only benefits. There is no contraindication, there's no problem at all. I'm very happy because the last years, I don't know, five, six years, I don't remember, Johan, I have stopped completely uh, using uh, chlorexidine. And not only I have the same results regarding the control of bacteria, I have also very essential benefits with oxygen. I have much better soft tissue healing, uh, faster healing, the oxygen works instantly when we place it. It is removing also necrotic cells. We have less pain, less inflammation after our surgeries, no cytotoxicity, uh, no allergic reactions, no disturbance of the flora. It's very easy. We have a wide range of different products. They can use the gel, the foam, the mouthwash in its way. We want clinically all the patients want to do it uh, at home. So it's an important piece of the puzzle. It doesn't do miracles, but it works in a very important uh, reason. The oxygen before the surgery, during the surgery, 
immediately after the surgery and for the long-term maintenance will help us uh, with our surgeries, with our implantology, with our periodontics to take it to the next level and in a very nice and predictable, predictable way, get excellent results for our cases. So uh, thank you very much. This is uh, my email, my Facebook page, whatever I told you today, and many, many other cases, you can find them on our, on our Facebook pages, uh, my page or the Blue M Facebook uh, group. If you have any questions, just uh, send me an email. So thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Thank you, Minos. Brilliant presentation. Uh, we have a few questions that came in. Uh, the first one is, uh, can we use the gel also on children? Yeah, there are no contraindications so far. So yes, you can use it on children. The only contraindication regarding age is for the fluoride toothpaste. If I'm correct, is it, uh, that's about uh, use of six years and older. Uh, the second question is, uh, why is there no fluoride in the mouthwash? Uh, that's because the oxygen is killing all the streptococcus mutans bacteria. And there's a high quality of xylitol inside our uh, products. So xylitol also helps to repair the amamel and restore the teeth like fluoride is doing. But we have a toothpaste with and without fluoride. So regarding the toothpaste, you can choose if you want to have fluoride free or with fluoride. The fluoride version has 1000 ppm. So that's uh, pretty nice. Um, is it also useful to irrigate the roots during endodontical treatment? Yes, we have a product that is used for endodontical treatment. That's the oxygen fluid. That's a medical device mouthwash. Uh, that's this product. It's not yet available in Malaysia or Singapore, as far as I know. It's coming. It's a medical device product. It has a higher quality of oxygen than a normal mouthwash. There's no mint and no coloring inside. So it has. Uh, it's very neutral. It's very mild. And it is used by a lot of dentists to irrigate the roots instead of uh, floor. Uh, maybe Nimilas, maybe you could help uh, uh, entering uh, the yes. other question. Will the help this one? Yes, uh, <laughs> we have already some very nice uh, clinical experience. Also in uh, Copenhagen, one of the winning posters was about this topic where uh, the clinician did a very nice case where he used uh, Blue M gel in order to help necrotic bone after such a situation to heal. And uh, not only he managed to uh, improve the healing and promote the healing, then he was able also to place successfully an implant. Correct. Yes. So uh, our clinical experience is that uh, it might help. Yeah, there's also a big study being performed uh, regarding bisphosphonate phenas patients uh, on a big group in uh, Brazil. And the results are also amazing. So uh, yeah, it, uh, it will definitely help, especially on bisphosphonate patients because they have bad blood, blood supply. So it's, uh, the wounding is, wound healing is worse than a normal patient. It's very promising. It's very promising. Yeah. I, uh, I believe that it will have much, much stronger evidence uh, in the near future. Yeah. Uh, definitely, it can help. And for sure, it can create no problems. Yeah. Can only no, no side effects. So it's... Uh, okay. yeah. Uh, there's another one, Minas. Maybe you can reply yes. as well. Is there any study showing the effects of the blue M gel on the wound on the healing of periodontal tissue compared to the use of hydrogen peroxide and hydroxine? I can tell you that the uh, use of uh, hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide is very aggressive. It's a completely different philosophy. Hydrogen peroxide is uh, releasing oxygen all in once, usually in a very high quantity and with a lot of free radicals. So that's completely different compared to our product that's releasing a very low quantity of oxygen and in a stable way without free radicals. The way we produce our gel is uh, it's stable. So it's producing a safe form of oxygen. And hydrogen peroxide is very aggressive and not that safe. It's safer to, and the is a yeah, maybe maybe you could tell a little bit more, uh, Maynas. Yeah, right now, although we're working in, uh, because we have uh, a very big team, we're working in many, uh, in vitro and uh, clinical studies. Uh, right now, we don't have a specific comparative study on this uh, subject. There's one, there's one from India where they compared chloxidine uh, against uh, on, pa yeah, on patients. It's it's a case series. It's not. Yeah, a, correct. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a case series. So we have lots of clinical evidence. Lots of clinical evidence. Uh, there is uh, there is literature, separate literature. 
So we have a lot of literature uh, showing all the bad uh, results of chlorhexidine on the soft tissues. And on the other side, uh, all the benefits of uh, topical uh, oxygen therapy. And of course, most importantly, we have all this accumulated uh, uh, clinical experience all over the world with all those uh, clinicians that definitely we have a massive improvement of the soft tissue healing. All right, then there's, there's not an, uh, another one, maybe uh, how about a periodontal pocket irrigation? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can do it with uh, the mouthwash or the fluid, of course. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, or the, or the gel even, you can put gel in an area, yeah. 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 Leave it there. yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very good indication, yeah. But I, th I think if you have periodontal pockets, it's, a, it's advisable to apply the gel. And then the patient uses the toothpaste and the, and the mouthwash, right, Minas? In the clinic, uh, I start always uh, with irrigation. Mm -hmm. So with a very uh, fine needle, I go inside as deep as I, go, I can mm -hmm. in the pocket and irrigate it. Yes. And then I apply topically the gel. And then I show with a mirror to the patient how to apply the gel and try with the interdental brush to push it in, inside the soft tissues. Of course, the patient will never be able to, to apply the gel that deep inside the pocket. But uh, yes, we irrigate it. Then with the small uh, tip of the gel, the new gel that we have for the clinicians, we can send the gel deep inside the pocket. And then at home, the patient can just apply it on the gums and then use the, the TP brush. All right, that's the last question so far. Um, and uh, I'd like to all thank you for your uh, attendance. And uh, Minas, thank you for your great lecture again. Brilliant. Nice. New <laughs> nice pictures again. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back soon. We'll be back I, soon. I will wish you all a great weekend and uh, enjoy. And uh, see you all at uh, EDEM in October, hopefully. Bye, Bye, Holiday. Bye, Minas. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye -bye.